If you're not familiar with some of the button design flaws seen in this form, you might be making them yourself, without even knowing. So to avoid making these mistakes, let's take a deep dive and break down how sites like Airbnb, DigitalOcean and Netlify design their forms and why they look so much better. To put our knowledge into practice, we will start from a very basic form and upgrade it into a masterpiece. But first, let's examine what exactly is so bad about this form. A naive way of thinking about buttons goes something like this. If a button deletes, it's bad, so the button should be red. A button that cancels should be given a warning color, like yellow or orange. A button that adds or submits is good, so it should be green. The consequence of just focusing on the semantics is that your form will end up with no hierarchy. All of the buttons are styled the exact same way, even if they are not of the same importance. It's difficult to tell where you should focus or what is the purpose of the form. To create hierarchy, we need to first think about what is the primary action of the form. Sure, we can change the name, edit, add or delete features, but the primary action is updating the product. Everything else is secondary and should be designed that way. To have a deep understanding on how this works, let's get started on upgrading the basic form. I want to start working on the bottom three buttons as they are the most important for this form. For the submit button, which is the primary action on this form, I want to give a really strong style. To start off, I'm going to give it a green background color. As the button is looking very small right now, I'm going to increase its padding on the sides and top and bottom. The text to background contrast is very low, so what I'm going to do is change the text color to white. I'm going to make the corners rounded to make it look more like a button. Now, we don't want to use the same styles for the cancel button as it's not so important. So we're going to make a secondary style. Instead of adding a background color, I'm going to add a light gray border. And the same thing as with the submit button, I'm going to increase its padding to make it larger and easier to click. To add a little bit of color, I'm going to change the text color to yellow. We want to de-emphasize the delete button even more, so I think we can get away by just changing the text color to red. For me, these colors are a little bit too much. Let's look at the examples to see how other brands are coloring their buttons. As for Netlify, we can see for the primary color, they are using the brand color, which is a very dark teal. And for the secondary color, they are just keeping it completely gray. As for DigitalOcean, we can see they are using the brand color blue for both the save and cancel buttons. We can do the same thing for our form. So let's first check what are our brand colors. We can see that the border at the top is dark teal and whenever we focus on the input box, we can see the border color changes to a teal. So let's use this same color for our buttons. Even though I changed the buttons to be the same color, we can still see a very strong hierarchy between them. Being creative on how you style your buttons whenever you use borders or background colors can make a huge difference on how your buttons are perceived. One last thing I'm gonna change for the buttons is I'm gonna change all of their font weight to semi-bold. This is just gonna make them look a little bit different than the rest of the text on the page. To create more separation between the buttons, I want to keep the delete button on the left side and the submit and cancel on the right side of the form. To do this, I'm going to change the parent element to flex and justify the content between each other. Now, we need to wrap the submit and cancel button inside the div. I'm gonna set the div to flex 
and add some space between the buttons. To create some separation between the buttons and the rest of the form, I wanna add a very subtle gray background. But after I added that, I noticed I lost the rounded corners at the bottom, so I need to add them again. A controversial topic in the UX community is in which order should the buttons be? Should the submit button come first or second? Looking at our examples, we can see that Airbnb and DigitalOcean have the submit button be the second. But another form from DigitalOcean and Netlify shows their submit button to be the first one. For me, I like to have my most important button to be the most rightmost button on the side. So let's switch the position of the submit and cancel buttons. Last thing I wanna talk about is the wording on the submit button. Sure, when a user clicks on this, it submits the form. But that's not what the user is thinking. The user is thinking about updating the product. So a good tip is to use very strong action verbs on your buttons to give them more meaning. So let's switch the submit to update product. The added benefit of this is that now the button is even larger and more noticeable, which is exactly how we want our primary button to be like. Moving on to the next button, we're gonna find out a tip that is going to revolutionize the way you think about buttons. For the add another feature button, I'm gonna use the same styling I used for the delete button, as we don't wanna give it too much importance. I'm not going to change the font weight, as I don't want it to compete too much with the delete button. Instead, what I can do is use an icon. One of my favorite sites for free SVG icons is Hero Icons. I'm going to select the plus SM SVG icon and copy and paste it right before the text. To make the icon be next to the text instead of on top of it, we need to change the button display to flex. As we can see, the icon disappeared, so let's add it some width to show it again. We can see that the items are not aligned at the center, so let's change the button to that. The icon is looking a little bit large, so let's scale it down a little bit and add a little bit of margin to the right. As I focus on the button, I can see the black outline, which shows us the real size of the button. It's looking really short, which is gonna be a problem, especially on mobile devices, where you can't do so precise movements. Compare it to the delete button. To make it a little bit larger, add a little bit of padding on the y-axis. Now let's fix the delete buttons. For these ones, they're really not that important, so we can get away by using just an icon. Let's look at our examples and see what other brands are using for the delete icons. For Airbnb, we can see that they're using an X, and for DigitalOcean, they're using a trash can. I'm a huge fan of trash, so let's find it in hero icons, and copy and paste it over the delete text. Currently, we can't see the icons, so let's add some width to them. I think 6 is a little bit too large, so let's go down to 5. There is no exact science on sizing icons. Just try different sizes and see what looks the best. For the button color, I'm gonna change it to a little bit lighter gray. And on hover, I'm gonna darken it just a touch. This is gonna help the icons look more like buttons. As I focus on the button, we can see it's looking very thin. And as we know, this is gonna be a problem on mobile devices. 
so let's add a little bit of padding on the x-axis. Now, there's one last thing we can do that is going to turn our form into something amazing. If you paid close attention, you might have had seen this in the digital ocean example. Just right, that in the top right corner, that X icon, it's a very common element used in modal pop-ups. We know that clicking on it is gonna have the same result as clicking on the cancel button. So let's try to recreate this in our form. I'm going to start by searching for X on hero icons and copying the SVG. And I'm going to paste it right after the supporting paragraph under the heading. Now it's looking way too big. So let's change the width to the same as we used the plus symbol on the add another feature. I think it's a little bit too small for this kind of button. So let's raise it up to 8. When I click on the icon, I don't see any outline showing. This is because we forgot to wrap it inside a button. So let's do it now. As for the colors, I want to use the same colors as I use for the trash can icons. So just copy and paste it. To position the button to be on the top right corner, we can use the same technique we used on the bottom three buttons, which is on the parent element set the display to flex and justify the content between each other. In this case, we need to wrap the heading and the paragraph into a div. Currently, the button is aligned center for the heading and paragraph, but we want it to be on the top. So add item start to their parent element. When I first learned about these techniques, it blew my mind how big of a difference they can make. And hopefully you feel the same way. If you learned anything from this video, even the tiniest amount, please like and subscribe as it helps out a lot. In future videos, I will be covering checkboxes and drop downs and how to improve them using these same techniques. See you next time.